Okay. My sister has um, some significant credit card debt and she's really struggling. She has two full-time jobs and um, she has these companies contacting her saying they'll negotiate with the credit card companies if they pay, if she pays them a monthly sum. I said, do not do it. Right. Um, it's a scam. Right. So right. beyond bankruptcy, what would be her option? Okay. What she has to do is tell them all to stop calling her and send her a letter. Do not discuss. Do not verify your address. Don't. Just say, you guys do your job. I'm disconnecting. Don't call me again because it's telephone harassment. Okay. okay. Don't talk to them. Make, them. make them send a letter. Once they send a letter, don't pay them. Never pay. Make them sue you if that's the case. What state does she okay. reside in? Where does she live? Um, well, she's working in Idaho right now. Uh, that's okay. not her permanent, but I mean, for the time being, she's she, her two jobs are in Idaho. All right. So, so she's employed in Idaho. Okay. So in Idaho, yeah, they, they can garnish wages, but that's years down the road. Don't pay and make yourself uncollectible. Your best deal with creditors and debt collectors is if you do nothing. This is the total opposite of what everyone tells you. Why am I telling you this? Because there's a federal law and a state law and the rules of civil procedure, they all work the same way. If you don't pay creditors, let's say you have 10 creditors and you owe a collective $3 million, okay? And you make $50,000 a year. They can only take 25% of your net income. I don't care if you owe 50 million or 5 million. It doesn't matter. You're still going to end up in the worst case scenario of being garnished for that much. So why would you volunteer to pay and then open up yourself to another garnishment? If you're already going to pay, if you're going to make a deal and pay somebody, another creditor can sue you and garnish your wages. Now you got a garnishment and you're paying. And if you don't pay, you're going to end up with imputed income taxes. It gets really messy and really expensive if you start paying them. So never pay, make them garnish your paycheck if that's what they're going to do. And all your other property and, and income and money and savings accounts and all that, make sure it's held in trust or an LLC or something out of your estate. So the only thing that's exposed is your wage income. And I'd be happy to talk with her. I can go through the whole thing and make it very easy. I can make it very easy for her. Okay, so her her bank account would be exposed. She needs to yeah, put just that move it over to get an LLC. An, yeah, use an LLC. Right, that's the easiest way to do it. Yeah, and just just keep that account open for the first year. I like to do that so I look normal. But then put the money you care about, put it to your limited liability company. Even if you're the single member owner. It's still protected to some extent. You're still okay. So I guess my fear with credit cards is that what happens eventually, because I know like the interest is like, you know, it's like 20. It doesn't plus matter. The, the dollar amount, you'll never pay them. Anyways, yeah, you'll never like, pay and the debt's going to expire. So it doesn't matter. Who cares how much interest it is? Okay. So when they does the debt it. expire? Uh, it's a statute of limitations. Could be seven years, could be 10 years. Really? Yep, it could be. Um, this does not have to affect you, though. This is what I show everyone. It doesn't matter how much debt you owe for how long, because I show you how to do everything outside of your name. So you can you can get rich if you wanted to and never pay them. They can't touch it. The only thing I can't prevent them from taking is winning the lottery, which you probably wouldn't care about. Um, <laughs> okay. but, but everything else, you know, uh, you just don't pay them. And just organize your affairs so they're out of your name. If someone sued me, for example, if someone sued me today, the question is, ask yourself, if someone were to sue you today, well, how would you respond? In most cases, I would ignore it. They would win, and they would get nothing forever. Mm. Okay. If you, if you can I'm do that, it. then, yeah. yeah so that, that, And then so now, now what does that allow me to do? Well, I can ignore that and not be in that drama. I can focus on making money and doing fun things that I like to do. And so, yeah, yeah I got to do them differently, but that's okay. I'm happy to do it that way. But, you know, I'd love to talk with her. I can, I can go over the ins yeah. and outs of it. Yeah. Okay. And then one more question. If you um, decide to go this route, they sue you, whatever, and then whatever, it becomes uncollectible. Are you done with credit? I mean, it can, no. how would you ever be able to get credit again? Okay. So to answer A's question and your question. So A's asking, wh why do they get nothing if they win? Because I'm uncollectible. I don't have anything mm -hmm. they can take in my name. I have plenty of money. Right. It's not just not mine. It's not mm -hmm. within the purview of what they're able to take. Now, as far mm -hmm. as credit goes, that's another chess game. So okay. 
I let a credit item settle, meaning they're going to stop reporting after a certain time, but it's going to show up in your file for like, let's say seven to 10 years. So an unpaid credit card uh, account item mm -hmm. is going to be under credit as defaulted, right? That looks bad. It's going to lower right. your score quite a bit. Yeah. So what you do is I'll give you a summary. I'm not, this is not, don't just take me literally here, but here's what you generally do is you pull mm -hmm. your file, you, you remove everything that's old, outdated, inaccurate information. Then you go onto LexisNexis on the internet and mm -hmm. you freeze it. You freeze your credit file with LexisNexis. Mm -hmm. Then you go to Equifax and you dispute that credit item, even though it's accurate and it shows you're in default and it brings your score down, dispute mm -hmm. it. And Equifax will have to validate the account. Now, here's how Equifax validates the account. And this is the fraud of the whole system. LexisNexis is just like Equifax. It's just that we never talk about it. So Equifax makes an inquiry to LexisNexis. LexisNexis has been frozen with regard to your account. So because mm -hmm. that's happened, Equifax cannot validate. Therefore, it okay. must remove the item from your credit. Then your score goes up. Okay. So it's just a game. Now, there's other ways of doing things like that. But anyways, you can fix your credit very easily in the first year or so, just by tricks like that. But you can also get things done without good credit. This is what I show people. So we could, again, we could talk about that. Okay, that very interesting. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, Thank sure. you. I appreciate All right, thanks it. for the question. All right.